Good afternoon. Welcome to the 2015 Tax Digest presentation, July 22nd, 2015. Uh, this is call this meeting to order. We have uh, three tabs. Mr. Pearson, I believe yes, sir. you're here to have a presentation. We'll have a brief, pres a brief presentation that we'll open up for a public hearing. And then we'll follow that with uh, the two tabs that require board action. Thank you. This is the third of uh, this is the third of three public hearings. Uh, we had our first public hearing July 14th at nine o'clock in this room. We had our second public hearing July 14th at six o'clock. Both these were advertised uh, in the Marietta Daily Journal, our legal organ, on July 6th and July 13th, announcing the the times and the uh, location as well as the date. And uh, it was also advertised for this meeting tonight at four o'clock. Uh, or at yeah, 4 o'clock in this room. Uh, the tentative increase, uh, we required by law to do a, a three public hearings because there is a, a tax increase based on the rollback rate. Uh, we're even, uh, looking to adopt a millage of 7.12 mills um, and the rollback rate is 6.944. And we'll talk about that a little bit as we go through the presentation. The gross digest for FY14 uh, it was 29.9 billion and this uh, FY15 it came in at 31.3 billion, which is a 4.53 percent increase. Uh, we have exemptions that also increased significantly by 529 million. Uh, a good majority of this is related to the floating homestead exemption that was put in place by this county back in 2001. And what that means is that if you're a homestead or property owner and the millage goes up or goes down, you will not see a change in your tax. Uh, your exemption will offset any increase or decrease uh, that your digest may experience on your home property. So the net digest for the general fund, the net increase after exemptions is 3.22%. Uh, this is the rollback sheet. Uh, you can see that uh, what if you look at the bottom part of the sheet in the middle, gross digest increased by uh, 3.35, uh, 3 well, um, we had reassessments of 1.4 million. We had 1.4 billion. We had other increases such as digest growth or changes to exemptions, which accounted for 529 million. So the net increase to our digest is about 800 uh, million dollars of increase in taxable digest. Um, let me just get one number here for you to further explain this slide. You can give next slide. Uh, this slide shows real property. Uh, the net increase in our digest, when you look at reassessments, subtract out, add reassessments, new growth, and you subtract out exemptions, is $825 million of new growth or additional digest growth from FY15 and FY14. Uh, the real property, and these are things that, except for public utilities that are assessed by our uh, tax assessor's office, Residential increased by 7.49%. Again, a majority of that is homesteaded property. So you'll see no tax increase or decrease, uh, depending on what, how the millage goes or your assessment goes. Uh, commercial property increased by 5.76%. This is usually done on a, uh, a three-year basis. And this is the, the one out of three years that we're going to see the uh, majority of growth in the commercial digest. Industrial 2.92, historic. That's a, a small amount, and that uh, down by 18%. Agriculture up slightly. Conservation use, brownfield, and public utilities is down 18 million. Uh, so that's that's assessed by the um, the state. So we don't assess that, but that's part of our real property calculation. So we have a 2.83% growth in real property. Uh, floating host and exemption, which I mentioned earlier, uh, we ha we are seeing an increase in this again as the economy went down over the past several years. We saw this exemption go down as the values went down, but now we're starting to see home values go up. If you're a homesteaded property owner, your exemption will go up by the exact same amount as your assessment. So you'll see no change in your, your tax, uh, tax bill on the general fund. Cumulative savings from 2001 to current uh, will be $221 million that's been saved uh, by the Cobb County taxpayers because of, of what the Board of Commissioners did back in 2001, what y'all continue to do uh, with this floating homestead exemption. Uh, what is the impact on this? Uh, this is a $200,000 home. Uh, if you 
pay taxes in 2014, your tax bill in the general fund at 7.32 mills would be $353. If you had a 5% increase in your property uh, through the assessment process, your value would go up, to, your fair market value would go up to 210, 210 million. Your assessed value would go up by 4 million, which is the 40% of the 10, 40, it would go up by 4,000, which is 40% uh, of the $10,000 increase. So your average floating homestead exemption on this house will go up by $4,000 as well. Your tax bill at a 7.12 mil, you're gonna see a tax savings of 9.66. So every homestead property owner should see a tax savings on their property tax bill from the general fund because of the floating home, ex home exemption offsets any increase. Uh, the fire fund tax digest, this is, accounts for about 96%, 97% of the operational cost for our fire district fund. Uh, we have 29 stations, we're working on 30 uh, as, as we speak. Uh, this is critical for response time. It's, it's critical to the public for uh, keeping their home insurance rates down, their ISO rating. Uh, we have a 4% increase in this fund. This is all dedicated, all spent on fire safety, or fire, the fire district fund. Uh, and it also funds its own capital plan. So not only do they pay for the operational cost, but they have to pay for their 10-year uh, plan, which includes facility maintenance, new facilities, truck replacement, ladders, pumpers, et cetera. So uh, they have a big picture uh, with this millage that it funds the entire operations of the county. It's not funded by any other source than the property taxes and some inspection fees, permit fees that they have to do for through the fire marshal's office. The debt service fund, uh, we see an increase of 4.06%. This is the exact same digest that you'll see in the general fund. The difference is they don't have floating homestead in this uh, as an exemption. So the, the increase is a little bit higher. This is 100% dedicated to the three GO bonds that are outstanding. Uh, we cannot spend it for any other purposes. As these bonds expire uh, through 2017, when we'll make our last payment, uh, this will be at zero. And we will, we will um, make the necessary adjustments in the next two years to make sure that we spend fund balance and our fund balance mix and our, our tax revenue mix brings us to zero when the final bond payment is made. Uh, Cumberland Special Services District, this is a new district. Uh, this is the second year we've had this district. Uh, it's uh, digest increased by 84.9 million. Uh, and we are looking to, to reduce this millage from 2.7 to 2.6. We have a targeted revenue of 5.15 million. And we were able to reduce the digest by 0.1 mil uh, within the special district to reach that targeted revenue with the, the increases in values. The Six Flags Special Service District, this is a new district this year. Uh, we don't have any comparators for 2014. It was agreed upon as when this district was created uh, that there would be a 3.5 mils for the first year of this district. And that will be spent for redevelopment and other improvements within the Six Flags district area uh, beginning this year. So we're gonna get our first tax payments. Uh, the bills go out August 15th. And as we collect those monies, those will be dedicated toward redevelopment and other improvements within the Six Flags district area. Uh, the proposed millage rate comparison, uh, the middle column shows what we adopted in 2014, and then the proposed in the left column, uh, 2015. Uh, for the, the county operating funds, the debt service fund, the fire fund, the general fund, uh, what's being proposed tonight is a 0.2 mil reduction uh, in the overall millage rate from 10.71 mils to 10.51 mils. The proposed millage comparison for the special district, again, we're uh, proposing the Cumberland Special Service District uh, to go down by 0.1 mils, and this is in keeping with the targeted revenue that they're looking to, to uh, collect from this fund. And so we've worked with them to make sure that whatever the digest comes in at, that will set the millage rate so that it brings in that $5.15 million. Six Flags District, again, that's, that's fine. Uh, it's a new millage rate that was uh, agreed upon for this first year to get 3.5 mils from the special district. Uh, the 2015 estimate tax, estimated tax rate uh, this is just a quick visual to show that when the citizens receive their tax bills, there are really uh, two major components, the Board of Education as well as the Board of Commissioners. Uh, the Board of Education is the blue part of the pie. It's 64.3%. Uh, they passed their resolution this morning recommending 18.9 mils. Uh, that's specific to them. They made their actions uh, earlier today. We have to affirm their actions because we are the governing authority that they uh, reside in. So by law, we have to reaffirm what they voted on, but it's their vote that they're setting the millage, but we just have to take action on it as a board by, by law. And then our 
tax rate is about 34%, 35.7% of the tax bills be specific to Cobb County. Uh, here's a history of the 2009 to 2015 tax digest in graph form. You can see that the 2015 digest, uh, it's still not back to where we were at 2009. If you look at the total tax digest, uh, we have made good recovery. You can see in 2010 to 2013, it was going down because of the economy, and we're starting to see it creep back, uh, partly through new growth, partly through reassessment, uh, but it's back not quite at the 2009 levels that was our high point uh, for tax digests uh, with, within Cobb County. And here's just another uh, picture of the digest and the line graph that shows it in a little different format, but you can see it. Again, we're not quite where we were in 2009. With that, Mr. Chairman, we are required by law to have three public hearings. We've had our first two already, and I would request at this time, uh, unless you have questions for me prior, uh, I could take them before or after, that you would open up the public hearing uh, as you see fit for our third required public hearing. Okay, let me ask you a question. Should we, should we take up uh, tab number one, which is to adopt a resolution for the Cobb School tax levy first before we go into this, or? Uh, that would be, uh, you that would be at your option. We, they uh, they do require us to affirm it. It has nothing to do with our pub, three public hearings. Okay. So that would be certainly something that you, unless I, uh, Deborah, Counselor, if you have any concerns about that, I don't. My personal opinion would be, be that you should open the public hearing. That'd be your professional opinion too, right? Okay. okay. Thank you, sir. Then we'll the public open hearing up. will be on our, our millage digest and not the Board of Education. Pardon me? Our, our public hearing will be with on our, our right, free right, funds. Right, So, um, first of all, I'd like, and I will do that in just a minute, before we open the public hearing, I'd like to put a couple of comments together. Is that okay? Yes. All right, first of all, um, I wanted to just put on record a couple of things. First is the process and the communication that our department leaders uh, in setting up the millage adoption schedule leading up to this meeting here this afternoon. First of all, it's, it's important to clarify that we're setting the millage for the FY15 budget, which closes in September 30th of 2015. Um, and that's what we're setting the millage for. Cobb County is one of the unique communities that sets its millage in arrears for its budget year that was adopted last August for 2015. Um, as we do these actions today, there's a set of events that occur uh, leading up to the tax bills going out in the fourth quarter in which a uh, fourth quarter calendar. So I wanted to make sure that we understand that this millage is for the prior year's budget. FY16, the FY16 budget will be taken up sometime next month. Next, yes, sir. So on February 17th, of 2015, the commissioner's offices were contacted with a request for availability to participate in the 2015 millage adoption meetings, including two special called meetings. Considering the feedback we got at the time for the initial correspondence, on March 26, our offices were again contacted to review final proposed schedule, including the adoption of the millage at a special called meeting on Wednesday, July 22nd. On March 30th, the final schedule, including the dates that required advertisement, would be posted. The public hearings and the final adoption at a July 22nd special called meeting was sent to all commissioners' offices. On July 6th, the first of two required advertisements ran in the Marietta Daily Journal, including notification that the millage rate will be set at a meeting to be held on Wednesday, July 22nd at 4 p.m. On July 13th, 2015, the second of two required advertisements ran in the Marietta Daily Journal, including notification that the millage rate will be set at a meeting to be held on Wednesday, July 22nd at 4 p.m. On July 14th, 2015, Mr. Pearson made a presentation about the tax digest and a recommended millage rate for each fund to the Board of Commissioners at two specific separate public hearings. The very first slide of the presentation we just saw was a summary of the adoption schedule. Mr. Pearson also verbally communicated the schedule at this time. Again, finally, I'd like to please note our decision to adopt the 2015 millage rate at a special call meeting 
instead of a regularly scheduled July night meeting was made in November of 2014 in collaboration with the tax commissioner, county clerk, and the finance departments to ensure that all the necessary paperwork could be processed and prepared to meet the deadlines preset by the Department of Revenue for the state of Georgia. The fact that we're here this afternoon is of no surprise to anyone that was paying attention. With that said, we'll open up the public hearing regarding the millage presentation and the millage recommendations for the five funds as presented by Mr. Fearson. Anybody wishing to speak for or against or have a comment to that regard, please come forward at this time. There are three minutes for each speaker. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman, Commissioners, Mr. County Manager. I'm Steve Covert, East Cobb, 3rd District. And as Mr. Pearson adequately pointed out, obviously, we're here to talk about the millage rate for 15. Um, and my question to you really is, is why do we have, why are we going to 7.12 mills when the growth of the tax digest seems to indicate, and I'm not the numbers man, obviously, but uh, seems to indicate um, that we could do better than that, all right? Um, you know, I'd be interested to hear why we're not reducing the rate to the, to the revenue neutral 6.944 rate um, noted in the paper or the 2010 level of 682 since our tax digest has now surpassed the 2010 numbers, which was what I was looking at in the paper the other day. Now we've got a 09 number. And I, uh, I see that's not quite the same, but the, but the, millage, was, or the millage was 6.82 in 2010, correct? I believe you're right. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Next speaker. Next speaker, please. Seeing and hearing on the public comment. I'm sorry. I called for the next speaker. I apologize. Please come forward and speak, ma'am. I wouldn't want to stop you. I didn't realize you were having trouble there. I wasn't in any trouble. I didn't realize you were having trouble. Oh, well, I wanted to wait for Mr. Cover to sit down because I was in fine. his way. I'm Fran Mitchell. Uh, Bob Ott is my commissioner, and he's not here to voice my opinion. First of all, I think we used to be a fiscally fit county, and we are spending money like crazy. We've got the Braves going. We've got, we're going to be building this bridge to I don't know where that's going to be, we have to pay for. We're increasing our millage rate. Uh, why are we doing this? Why don't we live in within our means just like the average taxpayer does? Another thing is, this was sort of just pounced on me. I didn't know about this meeting today. You're, I know you read your, your memo and all this stuff, but uh, maybe Bob Ott would, if he had known, or didn't know about it they, he he and had he known he probably would have scheduled himself to be in town for this meeting but i think i have on my calendar tuesdays and thursdays for your board meetings i planned on going to the board meeting uh next tuesday coming to this board of commissioner meeting tuesday and i know you have a town hall meeting as well tomorrow night why could this not wait for a regular meeting thank you thank you ma'am Are there any other speakers? Seeing and hearing none, the public hearing is closed. Mr. Pearson, I believe we have three items before us today. Yes, sir. The first item, tab one, commissioners, is to adopt a resolution established for 2015 Cobb, tax, Cobb County Tax Levy for countywide school construction bond purposes for maintenance and operation of the schools, again, as required by law. Uh, again, this, they passed this by their board uh, today, and we merely have to approve the resolution that they have uh, approved. So this is required by law. Okay, so I'm going to read the recommendation in the okay. agenda item. Commissioners, I'll bring this forward in the form of a motion that the Board of Commissioners adopt the Board of Education's resolution establishing a 2015 countywide school tax for maintenance and operations of schools, 18.90 mills, countywide school tax for construction bonds, 0.00 mills, 
Marietta property annex 1995 through 2004 at 0, 0 0.00 mills as required by law and authorize the chairman to execute the millage resolution for the Cobb County Board of Ex uh, Education. Second. That's a motion. There's a second by Commissioner Weatherford. Call a question. Motion carries 4 0. Tab 2 is the request for the third public hearing, which we've just completed. Correct? Yes. Uh, the recommendation for this is to the Board of Commissioners adopt the resolution and set the 2015 millage rates for the Cobb County General Fund, Fire Fund, and Debt Service Fund, Cumberland Special District, and the Six Flags Special Services District, and authorizes the chairman to execute the necessary documents. Okay. And to be specific, I'm going to reread it with okay. the numbers in there. The Board of Commissioners, my recommendation to the Board of Commissioners today is that we adopt a resolution that sets the 2015 millage rates for the Cobb County General Fund at 7.12 mills, the Fire Fund at 3.06 mills, the Debt Service Fund at point, or 0 0.33, Correct. that's 0 0.33 mills, the Cumberland Special Service District 2 at 2.6 mills, and the Six Flags Special Service District at 3.5 mills, and authorize the chairman to execute the necessary documents. That's correct. And that is my motion, commissioners. Is there, there's a second by Commissioner Burrow. I have a question. Call Chairman. just a minute. Yes, yes we've got a, a question comment. prior to vote. Um, do we need to vote on tab two prior to tab three? Tab two was um, yeah. conducting a public hearing, which we did. Okay. So we, we took pad tab two first. And I apologize for that. That was okay. Just, that's okay. Ready for the presentation. Okay. So, Commissioner, okay. We, okay, okay got it. Sure okay. So we have a motion, a second. Any other comments? Call a question. Motion carries for zero. Are there any comments from the board before we uh, conclude our meeting? I just wanted to indicate um, one more time that this was a reduction in the millage from FY15 versus the adopted budget of 2015, and it was a reduction from 2014 and 20 or 2013 uh, and 2012. Um, we, when we went into what is considered by many to be one of the worst recessions. In recent history, we've made some adjustments, and we promised that as the as we inc improved, we would roll the millage back. We're almost there, as you indicated. We're not quite there. Um, we'll probably uh, be able to get back during the 2015 or 2016 budget. So we appreciate. I appreciate very much the board working with us um, over the course of the last year. Number one, Mr. County Manager, to keep the budget within our revenues and enable us not only with an increased budget due to our commitment to the police community and adding new police positions, adding new police equipment, going to special pay, uh, a lot of budget changes to focus on public safety as we said we would. So it was increased in our budget, but yet we are still able to reduce the millage. Um, and, and I think we're in a great positive place and I think the three radio agencies affirm that as well. Any other comments, Commissioner? Um, Commissioner Burrow. Commissioner Burrow. Thank you. Um, yes, I would just like to say that um, I'm glad to see that our commitment to reduce by 0.2 mils till we get back to the pre-2011 increase. Um, that like to, I'm glad to see that we're on track with that, and that's why I'm in agreement of approving the millage. Thank you, Commissioner Weatherford. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. A point of privilege. Uh, uh, this week and last night, we had the opportunity to honor the life of Lance Corporal Skip Wells that was tragically killed last week in the Chattanooga uh, shootings. I wanted to give out the details of the arrangements for his funeral, if I might, and let the public know that so they can participate or at least uh, show support. Corporal Wells will arrive tomorrow at 1246 at Hartzell International Airport. Uh, he'll be greeted by a contingent of Cobb officers, Cobb SO, Cobb School Police, Kennesaw Police, as well as Cherokee County Police with Cobb Motors taking the lead. Uh, he will be escorted from the airport at approximately 1300 or 1 o'clock to Winkenhofer Funeral Home in Kennesaw on Highway 41. At approximately 2 o'clock, we will be arriving at Chastain and 75, continuing on Chastain McCullum Parkway to 41. The visitation will be Friday night or Friday afternoon from 2 o'clock to 4 o'clock. 
Saturday from 6 to 8 o'clock, and the funeral will be at First Baptist Church in Woodstock at 2 o'clock in Woodstock. Pardon? On, Sunday. on Sunday, I apologize, on Sunday. And then he will be escorted for interment at Georgia National Cemetery in Canton. The family has asked and has mentioned uh, that they are not soliciting nor will they accept any donations. Uh, there are a lot of people that are trying to raise money. They've asked that if you do that, please go to any Wells Fargo and donate, and they will make sure it goes to a charity uh, that's worthy and they appreciate all support. They further ask that if possible, as little press and privacy would be appreciated. And I wanted everyone to know that. And tomorrow, as he arrives back to Cobb County, as he is Cobb County's own, uh, anyone that can at two o'clock or so line the streets with flags or wave their appreciation would be greatly appreciated by the family. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Anything else, Mr. County Manager? No, sir. We are adjourned. Thank you.